Greetings, retro gaming fans, and welcome to Emulation Nation. Tonight we will be, we will be talking. Uh, I screwed it up. Of course, you always screw it up. But this time we're going to be know. talking about exactly. emulation Emula and everything that you yes. can do with it. See, I try to be nice for all the fine people listening, and my tongue gets tied. All about emulation. Hey, at least we're all not right. talking about Fifi again. Hey, Fifi's long dead. Buried her in a cardboard box 20 years ago. And yet... Or something like that. Anyway, so <laughs> we've got off the rails already. But that's kind of kinda what we do. That's where we go. Yep. We where just are we like, starting out? We just hop on our crazy train and just run right off the cliff. So... All aboard! What is an emulator, dude? What what do we what is what is it? Well, an emulator is software that emulates the hardware, such as an NES or a Super Nintendo or the Atari Twenty Six Hundred or the Atari Seventy Two Hundred or the Atari Fifty Two Hundred or the Atari or, 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 Jaguar. Or, or. I don't know. You know, I don't think there's actually one for the Atari Jaguar yet, but uh, oh, I'm sure there is. But I know that there's yeah. not one for Admiral Akbar. Hmm. That's a trap. Anyway, now we're getting stupid. So when it comes to emulators, other Get things it. that are emulators. Mm -hmm. Here's one for you. How about uh, Famiclones? Yes. Software on a chip. It emulates the hardware of an NES or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. things like that. Um, Retron 5. Well, actually, any of the Retron consoles are really an emulator. True. Um, although the Retron 5 is a true emulator because what it does is that when you put the cartridge in and turn it on, it dumps the ROM to memory and then uses software to play the game. So it's a little bit more of an emulator than a clone system is, but it's still an emulator. It's a software emulator rather than a hardware emulator. Now, other things that are emulators or that, that are, well, emulated uh we virtual console that's yes. technically emulated um mm -hmm. there's also uh the switch online system switch online uh service you know the super nintendo yep. nintendo those are all emulated so there's a lot of different kinds of things and that kind of leads us into the next topic of you know what emulators there are but when it comes down to it I think before we get into what kind of emulators there are, because there's so many different kinds, um, even though we've already been kind of talking about some of the emulators, um, I think what we might want to do is just kind of describe, you know, what you can do with an emulator, how we got started, you know, that kind of thing, because that kind of gives a, a wider view of emulation and what you can do with it, how it works, and so on. Mm-hmm. I know what I want to say, but I want to get you started because I've been talking for a while here. All right, I'll take over. Um, as far as my emulation, I I think I was told by a friend at school that they existed, and again, this was probably late '99, and I don't know why I added again into that, but you know, um, so <laughs> he had told me in like late '99 that they existed, and I was kind of like, well. I only have so many consoles, but I can't get a hold of every game that I would like to try. So hey, let's find you know let's find them and let's find all the games to play and whatnot. And back then, I think it was kind of a wild west of emulators and just finding the the ROMs and and doing all that stuff. Oh yeah. Um, but there were really almost any emulator possible at that point. I remember specifically using the one with a, a kind of dodgy name that was for the NES. Um, <laughs> Nesticle. There, yes, okay. Yeah, now I went there. Said it, cat out of the bag. Oh, wait, Fifi's out of the bag. <laughs> um, but yeah, I used Nesticle, and that was one of the first that I used. And then I found, was it SNES, SNES 9X or something? I can't it was either that or ZSNES. Those that was one of the oh, first yes, ones yes. that was good. Yes, you're right. It was that one. Didn't that one have like a uh, like a starry background or something until you and there was a lot of purple. The ROM. 
Yes. Yes. Okay. I think that, it was. It was that, I think it was technically DOS based, even though it did work in Windows. Really. Interesting. I if I remember correctly, I may be remembering it, wrong. It's been so long since yeah. I used it. Yeah. Um. And then I found uh, like K Gen for the Genesis. At that point, I didn't know that you know the Sega Master System emulators existed, but I think that was part of K Gen, or maybe it was later. But I think it was it later was that they combined really, them. Okay. It was really easy to find them. It was really easy to find the ROMs. And my experience, you know, my purpose for using emulation was, and kind of still is, testing games that I can't otherwise get my hands on. That's kind of how I feel that it, it benefits me. Because I would, like, Legend of the Ghost Lion, I think it is, like, it's that RPG. I'm really into RPGs. Never could find it. And I was like, well, I can find it online and emulate it. So I did. And I didn't get very far because, of course, it being a Wild West, I couldn't stop finding other games that I wanted to play. Um, many other situations of playing a lot of Super Nintendo games when, at that point, I didn't even have a Super Nintendo. And I did have a Genesis, but again more Genesis games that I wanted to play with the K-Gen emulators. And that was pretty much why I found and used and loved emulators back in the day. Yeah, with me, it was a little bit different because I actually decided to buy a computer a little bit later than you did. I started probably, I think I got my first computer in like 2000, maybe 2001, something like that. And... You know, when I was on the internet, this was back when I had dial-up. Uh, no, it's terrible. Anyway, that was fun. Yes. Anyway, so what happened then is I was just surfing around, just kind of looking at some games. And somehow, I don't remember how it was, I came across um, a forum back then where forums were actually popular and still being used. Um, I came hmm. across people talking about translated ROMs. So I kind of yeah. fell down that, that rabbit hole, and that's my first experience with an emulator. I don't remember which emulator it was. It might have actually been Nestor, which was another very early NES emulator. And that's how I originally played Final Fantasy 2 II and 3, not the same ones that were released on the Super Nintendo in the United States. These were Japan only until Final Fantasy Origins came out for the PS1, and then the Game Boy Advance, and so on. But that's kind of how I got started with it, and there were a couple of games that I ended up playing that otherwise I'd never played before, or since, actually. But that's kind of how I got started with it, and then from there, you know, probably 10 years later, you know, this is maybe 10, 15 years ago, that's when I started playing with ROM hacks. And those were kind of fun and everything. So, you know, when it comes down to it, I mean, there's... Even though some companies think it's piracy when you talk about ROMs and all that stuff, but if they're unwilling to release a game in another language so someone else can play for it, I consider it, you know, fair game, unless you're trying to sell it or something like that. I mean, it's worth playing. When it comes to ROM hacks, most of the time people change the game so much it's no longer the same game. And according to the DMCA, it's kind of an illegal gray area there. But that's kind of how I got started with the emulators and ROMs and all that fun stuff. But uh, obviously, things have progressed quite a bit since those days. They've done quite a bit thing. when it comes to it. I blame you for this one. Uh -oh. Remember what did I do? One, day, one day you told me that I could play ROMs on my Dreamcast. Uh oh. Yeah, I did. I could. I, I told you about that. Burn, burn a disc with ROMs, and I think the emulator was in the in the image, and um, mm -hmm. I could play all that stuff on my Dreamcast. Yep, you just download the soft or download the software, drop it on a CD with the ROMs in the right format, and then burn the disc and toss it in, and it plays. My problem is, is that my, my current Dreamcast does not play bird games, no matter what I do. Oh. 
Yeah, that's something that I'm thinking of, like, you know, in in kind of the growth of the emulator is we started way back with Nesticle, hee <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, now we have almost anything that is, you know, it's amazing. You can emulate just about, just about any console you want. But back probably, you know, 15 years ago, it was burn it on a disc and play it on your Dreamcast. And that that kind of blew my mind with that much progress since where I had started. Oh, yeah. And now, you know, things have progressed and we're kind of getting back into what kind of emulators there are. Um, any of you out there listening have a Super Nintendo Classic? Uh, Nintendo Classic, or even the Sega Genesis Mini. Oh, that's all emulated. That's 100% emulated because take apart the computer and it's a small single board computer that actually runs the the ROMs that are on in the, the memory. And of course, people have found a way to, to uh, uh, hack those game systems and add more games and uh, all that fun stuff. So... You know, people people do all that all that kind of thing. Another thing that I I like is uh, Raspberry Pi, which is a small single board computer that a lot of hobbyists use to, you know, they put it in robots. They use it for uh, a small server. Or they they use it to control the lighting in their homes, all that kind of stuff. There's software there's like that you can put on it that will literally turn it into a game system that will run, you know thousands and thousands and thousands of different games across 50 to 100 different consoles and there's you know there's quite a few and i'm i know i'm kind of rambling but when it comes to emulation there's so many different things out there that that we've tried matter of fact there's even two forms of emulation that i think that no company is going to go after saying it's piracy because um with some of the some of the older DOS games, or even, um, like the old uh, you know King's Quest and Monkey Island games on the PC, they don't run that well under Windows or or anything like that, or even on modern computers. So, um, there's a company called DOSBox, which was created to basically emulate DOS, so people can run DOS games on modern consoles. I should say modern computers, but they do have it on consoles. Then there's also the, uh, uh, why is my mind drawing a blank right now? Yeah, Scum VM. And Scum VM was created to play those point and clicks. So basically you, you put your put your game in, copy the files to a directory, and then you point the software to it, and it'll take the game files that are from your, and I'm putting in air quotes, your legally obtained copy of the game. Because let's face it, they don't sell them anymore, but you know, a lot of people do have the, the official game discs. But you just put those in those directories, and then you can play the game the way it was originally intended, at the with the correct speeds uh for the computer and and all that. So there's so many different ways of, of emulating that are out there and it they really work out pretty good. Now I've kind of rambled on for like 20 minutes now. Okay, it's not been 20 minutes, but it feels like it because I talk a lot. Well, I was going to say, one of my absolute favorite emulation stations, I guess, would be, which is an app, by the way, folks, don't be confused, um, is by no we. If you saw, I'm not telling anyone should, but it's very okay. Fun. All if right, we're having some technical theory, difficulties. Many emulator. All right, Sam, you're gonna have to repeat that because we had a little bit of technical Uh-oh. difficulties. So we are using Discord to do the podcast, and All apparently right. there was some latency there, people. So we'll go ahead and have Sam repeat what he was saying because he was cutting out badly. We apologize, folks. Is everybody's is everything sounding good now? Yes. I just kind of want, want to get one of those little uh, test pattern well, screens with that stupid uh, 
disco or not disco, but the elevator music to put on that that point. That'd be kind of fun. Anyway, you were saying. I'm sorry. It sounds like there might be quite a bit of latency because when I say something and then you reacting to it, it's still pretty late. Yeah, you're still cutting out. So this is the technical okay. difficulty portion oh, of the show, people. So we can always kind of cut it up at that point and you know go from there. Are you hearing me just fine? Mm -hmm. Speak. I hear you just fine. Um, uh, your circle on on Discord seems to work just fine. Okay, and I'm hearing you just fine now. Okay. So you were saying? Okay. One of my favorite emulation boxes is my Nintendo Wii. Because you can cram yep. so many emulators on there. And with storage of both USB and SD card, you can have just about anything on there. But the caveat being, there is in some newer console emulators a very, uh, I have to say, sparse compatibility. Yeah. Because those aren't for as far along as the PC emulators. True. I hate to say it, but my favorite I've emulator... I've noticed lately with the N64 I've tried, and it is just oh, well, that's, kind of touch and go. That's even intermiss. kind of difficult on the PC, though. Because some of those games are really I, slow I or laggy. That, yeah. But at the same time, there's PS three emulators that are out that run just fine. So I don't know what it is about the N64, but I hear Saturn is very difficult to emulate as well. But um, my favorite emulation is uh, something actually I provided to you after it, my cat broke it. So my, my PSP was freaking awesome for emulation until my cat oh, yeah. knocked it off the table and it broke the, the screen and all that fun stuff so I sent it over to Sam because he likes to repair stuff and well now he's got a working PSP mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm glad it wasn't Fifi that did it <laughs> no the cat's name was Buddy Buddy and Fifi I'm sorry, that was a cat that I had before that. No, it was Taffy. Big yellow tomcat. Oh. But cats so, do love to push things off of off of places. Yeah, because one could say they're, they're being dicks, but really they're practicing for what? I don't know, but they're doing that. Taking over the world? Yeah, probably. It's like, oh, here's a person on the ledge. Let me push him off. Exactly. So, that, that's what they're doing so how far have has emulation gone since you started because we've been kind of talking about oh, some of that well yeah um as far as i think the the older consoles have probably been a little bit better because i mean not to say that they were simple but you know more simple than you know ps1 or ps2 so I think that they were fairly okay out of the box when I started, and they've probably gotten, you know, a little bit better. But, you know, everything seems good as far as compatibility and how everything mm -hmm. runs and, and all that stuff. But well, when it comes to the newer stuff, it's still so young. Like a, a yes. DS emulator, you know, a DS emulator is kind of like, uh... Well... One thing I kind of want to point out is fairly early on, um, the uh, I think it was uh, ZSNES, actually, as long as you were connected to the internet, you could actually play multiplayer games with yes. someone with, the, with, you know, over the internet. And that was pretty cool, but obviously that's gotten a lot more robust over the years because now instead of 
connecting to, you know, literally point to point going to someone's IP, you can actually, I believe that some of them actually have kind of a server that you can set up that will actually, you can connect to it and go from there. But another feature that I really like that came out about four or five years ago, and I believe it's with with uh, one of the newer versions of SNES 9X, and it has HD Mode 7. So with Mode 7, that's kind of where the Super Nintendo would actually zoom out or rotate the screen and all that other stuff. It's used for uh, like pilot wings and F-Zero and all that, where some of the things that are rotating are kind of ugly looking while it's rotating. But this uh, modification to the emulator actually cleans that up and makes it HD so it looks good. Unfortunately, in my opinion, it kind of looks better than the other part of the game that it's not moving around, but that's a different story altogether. Once they get a consistency, then it might be pretty nice. You know, this might come as a shock, but you talking about ZSNES having the multiplayer, I ha- I have a story about that. Okay. I know that me having a story is a very rare thing but I figure the audience might enjoy it. So this is probably, I'm going to say, close to, I don't know, you know, I hate to throw out numbers because my brain doesn't remember them very well. But I will say 2007, a friend and I, you know, our mutual friend, uh, sort of, we were playing ZSNES, but once or twice, yeah. Yeah. Um, We were playing Turtles in Time. Isn't that the Super Nintendo one? Yes. My favorite okay. of the of the five or six or the, whatever that it made. Okay. And we were playing it, and we, you know, everything seemed to be progressing well. And I was like, all right, this boss is really hard. And he goes, what boss? And I'm like, you're not seeing the boss in front of us? And he's like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, dude, I'm beating up this boss. And he's like, what are you talking about? And I could see his character still fighting and still, like, everything seemed normal on each other's screens. But again, as we've, you know, found out earlier tonight, latency is a real bitch. (laughs) Yeah. And it threw off our levels to where I think I was like two or three stages ahead of him. And he had no clue how I got there. I had no <laughs> clue how I got there. So, but yeah. That's actually kind of funny, to be honest with you. I've never another had any... Feature that I, another feature I really like about emulators is safe stakes. Oh, yeah. I think they because, had those almost from day one. No, you're right. I believe they did. I just didn't know what they were. I didn't understand them. But as I'm growing older and less tolerant of the, quote, Nintendo hard, um, I'm finding that a save state is my best friend. So if I'm having trouble with something, I will save state, and then that way I can do it. I'm still putting in the effort. I'm still putting in the work. It's just not forcing me to go back and do it over and over and over and over again like the game wanted me to. I'm just starting where I wanted to start. Well, there's a streamer that I watch. He likes to play um, Super Mario World Kaizo games. Kaizo are basically, you know, super, super hard games. And what he does is there's times where he plays and keeps dying in the same spot. And he's like, all right. We need, sometimes when he gets past a certain point, he does a save state just so he can figure out what he does next. And once he figures it out, then he'll die then start all over from the beginning and play like normal so save states can also be used if you're not sure where to go on something but then you can always revert and go back to where you were so i mean it's a good feature it's definitely yeah. has its uses mm-hmm. um now let's let's kind of move on to uh you know like the legality because we all know that Nintendo hates emulators and ROMs. Ooh, it's gonna get spicy! Oh, yeah. Which <laughs> is kind of funny, because if you think about it, though, emulators are 100% legal. 
the games. That's yep. the gray area because everyone says that if you own the game, you can legally make a copy of the ROM for your own use. But yet, that really hasn't been proven in court or anything. So we don't really know if, if there's any real legality for that one. But Nintendo thinks that everything is illegal. But yet, if you think about it, they're guilty of making and selling emulators and ROMs. So there's a little bit of hypocrisy there. Do you remember back in the day? I think it was posted just about everywhere. And again, I don't know whether this is true or legally binding, but you could have a ROM for, what was it, like 24 hours legally if you didn't own it or own the game that you ripped it from. You could have that ROM for 24 hours or something like that. I don't remember the exacts on that, but that's something that someone was kind of thinking based on how they interpreted the, the DMCA. Okay. But again, I don't really know if there are any real precedent like, judgments or anything that have been made. I know that Nintendo was successfully sued and had ROM sites taken down, but that's literally straight due to piracy. But when it comes to having your own copy of something that you legally own, and making a copy of it. According to the DMCA, you're allowed to do that to protect the original copy. I'm not going to say emulation is legal or not legal. I'm just saying it exists. And as far as I'm concerned, it can be a tool for quite a few things. I mean, that. There are some places where you cannot get certain games or anything anymore because no one is selling them. So emulation is quite literally the only way you can play some of those. And with some game consoles slowly aging themselves into oblivion, that's, I mean, very few Ataris that I find are in fully working order because they're just slowly degrading because they're old. Of course, some of the some of the components you can replace and and refurbish it and get it working, but some of the chips that are on on those not only are they custom programmed from the the manufacturer, but some of those processors and chips may not even be manufactured anymore. So emulation is kind of a a way of preserving games, making sure they're there for the future. I'm trying to make the argument on both sides because obviously it's a hot button topic when it comes to uh, emulation. So I want to make sure both sides are heard. And yeah. uh, I think it's important to have those games because 75, 100 years down the line, someone may want to be like, hey, how was life in the 90s? So they look up stuff and they're like, oh, what is this? Pull up video games and then they play and they're like, hey, this is actually pretty good, even though it's weird. Because it, you use your hands with it. Only babies use your hands. Okay, that was a paraphrased reference to Back to the Future. So, sorry about that. Back to the Future 2, yeah, to be exact. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, I greatly enjoy emulation. Of course, when I can, I prefer to have the original cartridge, the original system. But... I guess that a lot of that is for the nostalgia. At least that's just how I feel. The nostalgia is having that painfully squared Nintendo controller in my hand. And oh, I thought you were saying you. you just want to see the blinking. Oh, well, of course. I mean, you know, what else does an NES do these days? But you slap the game in as hard as you can and go, will it work? And, you know, for nostalgia's sake, the original hardware, the original cartridge, that's what I love. But for convenience and, I guess, ease of use and ease of access, emulation all the way. Well, and, you know, pe people are going to decide which side they stand on. And that's just the way that it is, you know. If you love it or hate it, it does exist, like you said. Honestly, that's how I feel about actual books as well. Um, 
when it comes to emulation, I prefer the original controller at the very least because that's how I learned the game. But if I'm emulating a console or a game that I've never played before, or not a game, but a console that I've never played before, any controller works for me because I, I didn't learn the game with that controller. But when it comes to books, it's the same kind of thing because nothing can compare with the, the smell, the feel, the weight, everything of the actual book in your hand. But digital books are the way that I prefer to go because I can have a whole library in my pocket. And that's kind of how I feel about games as well because I prefer the physical copy of the game because I like to collect them. But at the same time... I don't want things to move to the direction of digital games unless they have a way that we're able to download them 25 years down the line because we legitimately bought it. So that's another win for emulation because as long as physical games are there, someone's going to be able to either buy a copy, get a copy, or whatever. And if it's all digital, well, it'll eventually go away, sadly. So, kind of goes back to the whole preservation thing, I guess. Mm -hmm. So, is there any and last you, words about emulation that we have? I'm sorry, you. Inter well, you I interrupted about me. The, I interrupted myself. You were talking about translated ROMs, and that yes. is a big one for me. I have a game that I can't play, and I've talked about it a little bit because I experimented with using my cell phone to translate, which didn't work very well. <laughs> yep. But it's an RPG kind of like Dragon Quest, but it's Gundam. And it's so awesome looking. But, you know, my dumb personality, not knowing Japanese, uh, you know, I can't read it. So it would be great to have a translation, and that would be the only way I would be able to play it. There is one game that I'm still trying to find, although I believe they did translate it, um, Racing Lagoon. I remember hmm. reading articles about that game, and I believe it's Squaresoft. I might be wrong with that. Uh, somebody will definitely uh, correct us. But it's an RPG slash racing game. And it, it when that sounds weird. Gran Turismo came out, yeah, Gran Turismo came out, and pushed the racing genre really far forward. Plus, the PS1 being one of the greatest, one of, not the, but one of the greatest consoles for RPGs, they mixed it together and made Racing Lagoon, and it looked awesome. But it never came out of Japan. Interesting. That's the only place it was. Well... It was uh, published by Square in 1999. Yeah. Okay. So, like I said, I I played the original Final Fantasy two or one and uh, two and three for the NES. That's how I played Dragon Quest five and six. Of course, the translations that I originally played were literal translations. They weren't good course all those games have been released in the united states on other consoles but um, obviously the translations on some of those games are much better but that's also where i got my start so let me take a step back so i believe it was ps2 it was a star ocean game i think it was till the end of time and it was a weird game because it was um uh, it started out as a sci-fi game, then you landed on a planet, and then there's dragons and swords and all this other weird stuff. You know, like like Japanese games are. They kind of mix fantasy and sci-fi together. You know, in the United States, we haven't done that kind of thing. Anyway, I'm kind of rambling now. So one thing I wanted to do, because uh, Till the End of Time was like the fourth game in the, in the series. And I understood, I heard that the first game came out on the SNES. And in a lot of cases, it actually had fully, uh, fully voiced uh, people that you talked with. Um, 
so it did have that, but there was definitely a bunch of uh, uh, emulated ROMs that I, I went ahead and played translations because they never came to the United States. Of course, that one did end up coming to the United States because I believe it came out again on PSP. Um, so I was able to play that. So there's there's so many different games out there that were never released in the United States. And as far as I'm concerned, unless the company wants to re- release them in the United States, emulation should be fair games. Mm-hmm. Fair games? Why did I, Why did I pluralize that? Anyway. Because there are many games that need translated. Yeah, there we go. I'll just I'll just say I'm thinking about bad translations and that's how it came up. Anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now I'm getting kind of weird. But um when it comes to when it comes to emulation I don't think it's ever going to go away. It's it's only going to get better and better and better and I there's going to be emulation on just about every system that comes out. So to emulate or not to emulate, that's, that's your decision. But, uh, I know what my decision is. What's yours? Um, yeah, I think I'll stick with my emulation. Yeah. I prefer the original games, but let's face it. If you're traveling somewhere, emulation can get you a lot more games. So, I think we've we've beaten this topic into the ground. I mean, talked it yep. into the ground. Just like one of the two. Wow, you're gonna keep doing that. Yep. Here Eating I said it as a joke, and you're just. Oh God. Anyway, Not literally people. everybody. There was never a cat named Fifi. It's a long-running joke from our uh, first attempt. And many, you can actually many, hear many some years ago. And you can hear that the, some clips of that on both the Vintage Gamers uh, YouTube channel, which this is on, and you can also uh, hear it on our first episode. We I took a mm-hmm. a selection of some clips and just put it all together and. Uh, put it on the first episode. Uh, maybe I'll put more outtakes. Maybe I think I have 15 minutes of it um, already on the on the channel, but I can put more if you're interested in seeing it. But now we're going off on a tangent. So yeah. there's there's many ways you can leave us messages down in in the comments. You can go ahead and go to any of our social media links that are listed in the subject or the video description. Um, We'd like to hear from you. What are your experiences with emulation? What are your uh, preferences? And how did you get started? Go ahead and leave a comment down there and and we'll read through them. And well, maybe uh, we'll address them on a future episode. And now there's crickets. Of course. Crickets, crickets. Anyway, right, no, that right. wasn't a sound effect. I was, yeah, I was, it sounds better in person, but I would guess over the microphone, it wasn't catching it, but yes, I was making cricket Probably. sounds with my mouth. Oh, okay. I'm like the Michael Winslow now, of fat white guys. I make sounds. We are. We anyway, are I'm getting weird now. to leave Emulation Nation. Yeah, let's get hop back in our plane and go back to our real lives. Yep which aren't much better than this. Sadly. Anyway, people, we're getting off on tangents tonight. I don't know what's going on, but uh, don't know what the topic is for next week, but uh, we'll see you next week. Goodbye, everybody.